Uh, radio here. This is the final version of it. As you can see, I have all these kind of bevels and cuts kind of cut into the actual model. If I come up and just isolate the uh, main part here, you can see this is that first complex shape that I was talking about. And you can see this is all done through Dynamesh, and there's a new function called Dynamesh Sub. And we can actually come in and start fusing these pieces together to get one solid mesh. So to do that, it's not like, it's kind of like the insert uh, meshes where you can actually do negative ones. But, um, let me find it here. Aha, uh -huh, that is why. So to start off, I need to think of this object in a negative subtraction mentality. So it's kind of like the same functionality that you may be used to if you've tried any of the remesh stuff um, in the previous versions of ZBrush. This one is a lot better and it's a lot stronger because now I can subtract tons of stuff out of this and keep that Dynamesh resolution and keep that exact like edge holding and everything that I want. So this is just some quick base meshes and uh, if I actually group split this here, you can see all the parts that this is made of. So I basically have the main starter shape, which is this shape here which forms my base for that radio. And then I need to think about how to do these operands in order to subtractively add these pieces together to get my final shape. So the first thing I want to do is generate this. And so what I'm going to do now is just move this up to my top of my list. And then I want to subtract these little side circle pieces that actually form well, these channels here on the sides. And so those are these two cylinder-shaped objects that are in these tool palette here. So I'm just going to move those up to the top now. So I'm just kind of organi organizing my shape and how I'm going to do these uh, operands. And then finally we have this piece, which is getting a lot of those uh, beveled corner edges. And then finally we have this piece, which is going to create this lip that goes along the inside of the actual mesh. So now for the fun stuff. So this process is extremely simple and extremely fast. So basically you come through here and you have these icons here. This is a positive and this is a subtract. So if I take my first object and now I divide this up a little to try to get some of these uh, uh, polygons out of the way and then I'm going to Dynamesh this. And if you have used any of the new ZBrush yet, if you control shift click and click on one of these tabs, it'll open and close all these really fast. So when you open up the new ZBrush, you'll see they're kind of collapsed. But if you control shift click on one, it'll actually expand everything, which is helpful if you know where stuff is, but you're not sure what menu it's actually on. So I'm just going to re-dynamesh this piece here. So I'm going to turn blur to zero and turn my resolution to somewhere around 512. Now the size of my, the object actually is uh, dependent on, the resolution is actually dependent on the size of the object. So for this object, since it's pretty big on my actual mesh, a 512 should give me enough resolution to actually uh, carve into. So if I read Dynamesh now, you can see I've got pretty good tessellation and pretty good uh, uh, quad spacing on that object. Enough for me to make these carved shapes into. If it was a smaller object, I have to increase this resolution. So any bolts and things that you'll see here I'm going to do in a little bit, I will increase the resolution for the Dynamesh on those because I want more detail. And since they're a smaller object, um, I just need to go around and do that. So now that I have this a Dynamesh, I'm just going to come through, set this first object here as a subtract, and I'm just going to go down here to merge down, which merges it into the scene. And when it did that, 
it actually assigns it this white polygroup. And what the white polygroup does is basically it's applying this method that's down here in polygroups, group as Dynamesh sub. So with that selected, now if I hold control and do my read Dynamesh, it's actually going to carve that right out of that object. And so as you can see, it carved it precisely exactly where I wanted it, and it's super clean. And so now I just continue on with this method. So I go to the next piece, set it as subtract, merge down, control click, second carve. Let's go to the third piece, merge down, control click, done. And now for the final shape. So there we have that complex shape that would have taken me forever to hand model with polygons done in no time at all. The only pre-thought or the time that took was literally me thinking about these negative shapes and figuring out where they're going to go on the actual object. So now I have some, if you look at the radio itself, it has some positive shapes and some other stuff going on. So the same process can work, but in a positive manner. So if I come in and import in some bolts now, well, I guess I'm going to do some more negative, actually, before the positive. Now, these should all be grouped here. So I'm just going to group split these again. And this one consists of some rubber gaskets that I'm just going to have positively added to the mesh. I have this carve, which is carving out the very top of this piece right here. These pieces, which are positive, which I want them to add to get these kind of circle shapes here. And then the actual bolts themselves, which would then have these uh, little star joints actually carved into them. And actually, I did this wrong. I want to append this in here quick. So I'm going to append my bolts file into this file, actually, before I group split it. This allows me to work with all those tools in the same file as my initial shape, and I don't have to append them all individually. individually. So if I bring them in first, and then I can group split them, and then they're actually in the same scene. So now we're going to go, we're going to do the positive add for our first piece. I'm just going to take this and move it up and turn on this one. Now for this one, it's just a positive Dynamesh, so I'm just going to make sure this is on and not on subtract. Do a merge down, remesh, and that should be, well, if I merge down the right one. Hold on. Let's get rid of these quick. I merged the wrong layer. But fear not, it's easy to get it back. And there we go. And now we're actually going to select the right one. Select my top tool now. I'm just going to turn off everything but the two I want. Positive. Merge down. Redynamesh. It's fused into the actual shape there. And now we're actually going to do our first carve, which is this one. I'm going to come to that. Negative. Merge down. And redynamesh. Ah. Uh, the merge down's getting me. And so there we go. Now we have those cylinders and that other piece you know, generated for this shape, those extremely complex shapes now generated quick. For the bolts now, um, I actually ended up deleting the wrong bolt. Basically the same thing with that. Um, these I actually want to be actually smaller, or they're actually smaller pieces, and so I want to make sure I dynamesh them at a higher level. So if I come to the actual bolt piece here, re-dynamesh this, and divide it up some. And this one, if I do it at a 512, turn blur off and Dynamesh, you see it's a little, has less resolution, so when I do that actual hex carve into it, it's not going to give me enough resolution for the actual object. So I'm going to undo that and set it to 1024 and re-Dynamesh that. So now I have a shape with a little more topology into it. Now this is, since it's not that main object, and I'm going to use it as a separate tool, so I basically just have that and then the hex shape kind of carved out to it. So the same process, merge down, and redynamesh. And there's my bolt.